A little bit more about the church. They have uh, tithing and finances. So I want you to know a little bit about this. Tith is this. It's basically, uh, you know, in 1838, Joseph Smith said that basically um, God commands that you pay a tax. It's currently uh, 10% uh, of your income. This is not required by the Church of Latter-day Saints to be a member, but it's it's expected. Um, maybe not entirely by the church, but you're pressured into it by your peers. You're you're just supposed to um, you're just supposed to pay your tith, which is ten percent of your income, um, and and you pay it to the temple. And this is again required by God. God has asked for this, not. People. Now, remember, in the Mormon religion, you can become God. Okay. Um, there's also what's the Temple Building Fund, which is um, goes into building new holy buildings. Um, oftentimes, there's fast offering where people will not eat for a day and they'll donate um, the money to the church. And, you know, all sorts of religions have this stuff, but this is often something that's critiqued, particularly of, of the Mormon church as a for-profit, you know, thing that they, 10% of your income is, it's a lot of dough. That's not just the plate going around uh, on Sunday and you put a fiver in there. <laughs> you know, this is like 10%, okay? Um, now, the church uh, also mostly is very involved in Brigham Young University, which is mostly LDS students, 98% LDS students out of 34,000 college students. Imagine the weekend parties there. <laughs> okay. They also own a Desert Management Corporation. Now, this is the thing is like a Desert, Desert Management Corporation is, um, you know, a company nonprofit company, I mean, excuse me, a for-profit company owned by the LDS, which is nonprofit. And this for-profit builds all of the Mormon neighborhoods and developments and builds the houses. Um, also, you know, owns book publishers, radio stations, TV stations, uh, real estate companies, um, all, all that, all, all that stuff. Um, and there's also uh, the Beneficial Financial Group, which is a uh, you know, big insurance company, again, which most of its customers are, are Mormons. So the church has a lot of business. Let's just, let's just, say, let's just let's say that, um, you know, which is just something to note. Um, okay, enough about Mormons. That's all about Mormons. It's really not, but I, I, I think it's important because I want you to see like how the church has been critiqued, how Matt and Trey critique it and, and why, and just to kind of get a little bit of like the history and some of the beliefs and the major figures, um, you know. And again, this is not to say like Mormons are, are, bad, are bad people or that the religion's bad or anything, but you have, this is just such a, 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 a really, really important point. We look at religions like Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, whatever, <clears throat> Buddhism, their beginnings are like thousands of years ago. Really hard, not a lot of ways to document that. There's not a lot of history documentation from some of those times when those religions were funded, founded. Mormonism in the 1830s, there's historical documentation of the time we were living in, the, what was going on in the world, and of the foundation of the religion itself, which brings up the skepticism, right? People can believe that thousands of years ago some motherfucker could split the Red Sea and walk on water and be resurrected from the dead and all this stuff that we know is really not humanly possible. But there's no way to disprove it because no one was there uh, shooting documentaries on Jesus, um, you know, or photographing Jesus. Um, whereas Mormonism and Scientology, right, are relatively recent faiths. 
faith that we can put in historical context, which is where, you know, stands cultural skepticism of the non-rational becomes very important. 